Let's get out today and explore the desert as we talk about biomes and ecosystems. So today we're going to be talking about biomes and ecosystems. Now you might be saying, Lacey, that sounds boring. Boring. But it's really not. If we didn't have healthy, healthy ecosystems around us and live in a healthy ecosystem, we wouldn't survive. So they're very important. I'm also going to be telling you a little bit about this beautiful area all around me. So a biome is a large area of land where certain types of animals and certain types of plants have learned to survive in that certain type of climate. So it is a large area of land like this desert. We are in the Beaver Dam Wash, which is part of the Mojave Desert. So there are five main types of biomes, and they are the deserts, grasslands, forests, aquatic biomes, and the tundra. It's a bio, bio, it's a biome, an area of land, lots of things call home. Where certain animals and certain plants have adapted to a specific climate. Deserts are dry where little rain falls, and not much can really grow there. Whereas a forest has a ton of trees, with insects, birds, and mammals everywhere. It's a bio, bio, it's a biome, an area of land lots of things call home. Where certain animals and certain plants have adapted to a specific climate. Grasslands can be tropical. They can be temperate. They are warm and dry and full of grass with trees that are infrequent. It's a bio, bio, it's a bio, an area of land lots of things call home. Where certain animals and certain plants have adapted to a specific climate. The largest biome on earth is the water. It is called aquatic. It can be fresh water or marine plants and animals there are quite exotic our final biome is called the tundra it is the coldest one the soil there is always frozen burr that doesn't sound so fun it's a bio bio it's a biome an area of land lots of things call home where certain animals and certain plants have adapted to a specific climate. They have adapted to a specific climate. Whereas the biome is the large area of land where plants and animals live, the ecosystem is an interaction between living things, such as plants and animals, with non-living things, like the sun, the soil, water, and air. There can be many, many ecosystems in one biome. Everything from the whole desert down to a single puddle or even a tree trunk can contain a thriving ecosystem of its own. So how can a tree trunk be an entire ecosystem? Well, water causes decay, which helps moss and tiny little green plants grow there. Then insects will come and eat the moss, which attracts frogs and birds that like to eat insects. And those animals will attract other things like snakes and lizards that like to eat frogs and birds. All these parts of the ecosystem depend on each other for survival. If the moss disappears, for instance, the insects have to go somewhere else to eat. And in turn, so do the frogs and so do the birds and so do the snakes and lizards that eat the frogs and birds. <laughs> As humans, we rely on other humans to survive, but we also need things like air to breathe, the sun to warm us, and water to drink. Plants and animals are the same. They need things around them in their environment to survive. Lizards, for example, need bugs and greens to eat, as well as the sun to help warm them up, burrows or trees to shade them to cool them off, and air to breathe and water to drink. All of these interactions are a necessary part of an ecosystem. Every living thing in an ecosystem has a role to play and is very important. As a producer, a consumer, or a decomposer. So green plants are producers. They make their own food through a process called photosynthesis. Animals, including humans, are consumers. 
They eat or consume plants or other animals. And bacteria and living things that cause decay are decomposers. Decomposers break down the waste products and dead tissue of plants and animals. They then return nutrients to the soil where new plants grow. The way that producers, consumers, and decomposers provide nutrients for one another is called the food chain. Animals at the top of the food chain, for example, a lion, are called predators. They hunt and kill other animals which are called their prey. Prey is an animal that is hunted and killed for food. So lions hunt and kill zebras and wildebeest, so the lion is the predator, and the zebra or the wildebeest is their prey. It's an eco, eco, it's an ecosystem. Living and not living things, their interactions. We need everything around us to survive. Healthy ecosystems keep us alive. Clean air to breathe and water to drink. The soil to walk on or burrow beneath. None of these important things are alive. But plants and animals need them to survive. In our eco, eco, in our ecosystem. Living and not living things, their interactions. We need everything around us to survive. Healthy ecosystems keep us alive. Water helps moss grow on a tree trunk, which attracts insects because it's good to munch. Frogs and birds eat the bugs off the ground, and then snakes and lizards eat the frogs all around. It's an eco, eco, it's an ecosystem. A tiny little puddle or a big ocean. Living and not living things interact. That's where the ecosystem is at. It's an eco, eco, it's an ecosystem. Living and not living things, their interactions. We need everything around us to survive. Healthy ecosystems keep us alive. Healthy ecosystems keep us alive. and desert is the first one I'm gonna talk about. Deserts are known for their lack of rainfall. There's very little rainfall in the desert. There are hot deserts, like this one, woo! And there are cold deserts, like the Great Basin Desert. Plants and animals in the desert have to learn to survive on very little rainfall. So there are certain types of bushes, trees, animals that live here in this desert biome. They have adapted to live off of very little water. We have creosote bushes, like this beautiful bush. And there's Joshua trees, like that Joshua tree right back there. We'll go take a look at that. So this is a Joshua tree. And Joshua trees store water in their trunks, and they also have a great root system to collect any rainwater that they may find. They have these waxy leaves that help keep the water inside so that they don't lose their water. And obviously you can tell they're very pokey. So a lot of animals that live in the desert either come out at night when it gets cooler, or they find places during the day to burrow. One of my favorite animals is the desert tortoise. And here in the Mojave Desert, we have the Mojave Desert Tortoise. Now tortoises have great claws and strong legs to dig and burrow when it gets too hot, which is important for other animals as well. This is an example of a living thing, the tortoise, and how they can interact with non-living things like the soil and ground in order to survive in their ecosystem. Without the soil that they could dig through, Tortoises and other animals wouldn't fare so well. Snakes, Gila monsters, burrowing owls, and roadrunners are just a few of the animals that use tortoise burrows to stay cool. Without tortoises, there wouldn't be as many burrows. And without as many burrows, animals could easily overheat and not be able to withstand the hot temperatures of the Mojave Desert. Desert animals and plants like this creosote bush not only have to adapt to the hot temperatures of the desert, but they also have to adapt to not getting very much water because there is little rainfall. Plants and animals have special ways to do this. Animals like the Mojave Desert tortoise can store water up to 40% of its body weight in water in its bladder. 
they can reuse that water later if they need it. Desert plants like choya, creosote, prickly pear, and Joshua trees store water in their leaves, stems, or roots. They can have spikes as well as thick waxy leaves or stems that prevent them from losing water or being eaten by animals. Now in the Mojave Desert, there is a creosote bush ring. It is called King Clone and it is estimated to be 11,700 years old. Creosote is one of the oldest living organisms on earth. The Mojave Desert is actually the smallest desert in the United States, but it is the one the early settlers dreaded the most. One reason is because of Death Valley. Now Death Valley is located in Eastern California in the Northern part of the Mojave Desert and is thought to be the hottest place on earth in the summer where the surface temperature has been recorded at 201 degrees Fahrenheit. Ooh, I think I've had enough of this heat. Let's head to the Great Basin. Now, as we transition between the Mojave Desert and the Great Basin, you can see plants of the Great Basin, such as the pinyon pine and black brush, mixed in here with some yuccas and choya of the Mojave Desert. So now we are standing in the Great Basin. This is considered a cold desert. So the Great Basin, as a cold desert, has low-lying shrubs. We have black brush, there's juniper, there's also some sage. Those are kind of the plants that characterize the Great Basin. It is a little colder here than it was when we were down the road in the Mojave Desert. The Great Basin's a little bit chillier. That does have hot summers and cold winters. And as you can tell, there's a lot more vegetation here in the Great Basin than there is at the Mojave Desert. Animals and plants that live here have to be able to adapt to the cold winters. So we have things like ring-tailed cats, species of bats, coyotes, mountain lions, great basin rattlesnakes, pack rats, all kinds of animals call this home. And they can be hot in the summer and cold in the winter. So here in Southern Utah, we have three distinct ecosystems that come together in one area, which is pretty rare for three to come together at once. We have the Mojave Desert, the Great Basin, and the Colorado Plateau. Spectacular red rock formations are the trademark of the Colorado Plateau. Reaching 12,700 feet, there are high forested mesas and mountains that are cut by deep canyons and cottonwood lined streams. More than 300 plant species in the Colorado Plateau are found nowhere else in the entire world. Animals include pack rats, mule deer, coyotes, and gray fox. So as we discussed, there are five main types of biomes. Now we've talked about the desert, but there's also a grassland. Now grasslands are large areas that are covered in grass, of course. Grasslands can be tropical or temperate. So the tropical ones are called savannas and can be found in Africa and Asia. They have dry and wet seasons, but it's always warm there. The soil is thin and includes large animals like lions, wildebeest, and giraffes. Temperate grasslands, like prairies, are made up of grass with few trees or plants. They get hot in the summer and freezing in the winter, so there is climate variation in the temperate grasslands. Grassland animal adaptations include hooves for running on plains, flat feet and enzymes for digesting the grass, and light brown fur color for camouflage. The third type of biome is called a forest. Now, this biome has many trees. There are tropical rainforests, like the Amazon, where it's hot and rains almost all the time. In the rainforest, sloths move very slowly, and they move so slowly that they actually have algae that grow on their fur. That algae helps them blend into the trees of the rainforest, where they spend 15 to 20 hours a day sleeping. There are temperate forests, which have trees that lose their leaves. Animals there include bears, mountain lions, squirrels, and the bears hibernate when it's too cold, and those squirrels store up food to eat all winter long. There's also boreal forests, which are found in cold climates. Animals in the boreal forests hibernate, camouflage, and have fur to help with the cold conditions. One really cool adaptation of the moose is that they have very long legs 
and those legs help them keep their bodies above the snow level. So the fourth type of biome that we're going to talk about today is the aquatic biome, which means water. Both freshwater and saltwater make up the aquatic biomes. And that is the largest of all biomes because 70% of the earth is covered in water. Obviously, fish have gills that help them breathe underwater. They have fins that help them swim and a swim bladder. But air breathing animals also live in these ecosystems and biomes like dolphins and turtles who can stay underwater a long time, but they do come up to breathe air. So the fifth biome is the tundra. And the tundra is a large, flat, treeless area that includes the Arctic, which occurs around the North Pole where the subsoil is always frozen. Ugh, no thanks. Tundra animals include polar bears and Arctic foxes that have adapted to have white coats to blend into their snowy surroundings. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to our channel so you can be notified when we post new content.